So the part that most of you have been waiting for, the graphics processing unit. For any gamer, this is probably the hardest working part of their build and also probably the most expensive. The GPU purpose is to render graphics on your display and it comes in two types, either integrated, such as on the CPU itself, which is a simple version, ideal for office work and video watching, or a discrete, known as standalone, card, primarily for high-end video games and visually demanding tasks for your PC. For this video, we'll be referring to discrete GPUs. A graphics card still undertakes computations like your CPU, but it's designed specifically for repetitive, parallel render processing, having anywhere between 1,000 to 3,000 lower-powered cores, your CPU generally has four to eight much more complex processing cores to compute more complex series executed instructions. Due to your graphics card parallel processing, it requires much larger amounts of working memory, such as two, four, or eight gig of RAM on board. So when we purchase a graphics card, what's in the box? Open up the side here. Looking inside, we have oh, actually a very nice unboxing. So, in the top here, we have a package of components for the graphics card. We've got the driver CD, we've got a manual for the graphics card, we've got an 8 pin to 2 6 pin connectors, uh, which I'll explain in detail in the build video, but essentially what this is doing is changing an 8 pin uh, 150 watt power connector to 270 watt power connectors for the video card. And we also have some cable management ties here. And under all of this as well, we have the graphics card itself. Now bear in mind the manufacturers might change uh, what's included in the cases, but at minimum you could expect generally a power supply um, cable of this type. Um, some might not include it at all because it may be expected that your power supply does uh, provide the compliant power inputs. But with anything like this, you'll get the graphics card at a minimum, the manual, and the driver CD as well. Uh, generally, if you've already got an internet connection, the version um, or the driver version on this is generally already superseded. So I might recommend in any case uh, jumping straight onto the manufacturer website and downloading the latest from there. So you don't always need a crazy top-of-the-line graphics card for gaming. Have a look and see what's best suited for your purpose. How many screens you're looking to run, the resolution that you're looking to run, and the refresh rate of the screens also. Uh, if you have lower-end screens, a high-end graphics card might be completely wasted on that, so do your research beforehand. With any build, there's always a compromise when building to meet costs and computer purpose. But a key point for a gaming computer is not to buy the biggest and fastest CPU and skimp on the graphics card, as this will impact your gaming performance as your computer relies on your GPU to render the game e images at high detail and frame rates. Generally, a mid to high range Intel i5, such as a 4 or 6 core, or an AMD 5 or 6 core processor is fine for a gaming PC then essentially spec the most reasonable graphics card for your budget. Our general rule for a gaming PC at whatever level is to spend one and a half to two times the CPU price on your GPU for the best overall performance. With graphics cards especially, don't pay attention to the marketing. Look at the specifics of the GPU that you're looking to purchase. The GPU core type, such as a GTX 1060, 1070 or 1080, the GPU core frequency, the RAM type, the RAM interface width, such as 256, 384 bits, the RAM frequency and the RAM size. Now, this list is ordered to what we believe most impacts performance to what least impacts performance. 
When you've chosen one or two cards that you deem best, either see reviews on websites, forums, and read their benchmarks online to compare the game performance to help you choose. So when choosing a graphics card, we recommend to choose a reasonably reputable manufacturer uh, that has a good warranty and also where you can see if you can get a factory overclock version of the card as generally this will run faster than the other versions of the same type such as a GTX 1080 on the market and the maker of the card will also warranty that even though they've overclocked the card from factory. Don't forget when installing the GPU also to connect the supplementary power connectors. So if you'd like to learn more, jump over to our website at easypcbuilder.com where you can download our monthly updated build guides for gaming PCs of various levels, office PCs and media PCs, and you can also download our Easy PC Builder Master Course. Thanks for watching.